Borders. Mm-hmm. Libertarian. Come on, borders. So I, I talked to Joe about borders, okay? You know, let people come in. You know, don't worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. What is your position when it comes down to the borders? Oh, yeah. So I have a very different uh, outlook on borders. That uh, And there's there's a big divide. There's been a big split amongst libertarians. I'm, I'm not an open borders guy. Um, I, I don't believe that that's the correct libertarian position. Um, my thing is that, like in the philosophical abstract, I don't think that anybody inherently has a right to go some to an area that they don't own or are not invited to. And so I think that probably my ideal situation under the current paradigm would be something like a sponsorship system, an invitee system, where you basically have to get an American citizen to vouch for you and financially kind of, you know, like back you in order to come into the country. Uh, I don't think that just roves of people showing up have some inherent right to be here because they decided they wanted to. Um, but uh, the current system is, ba- is is insane. Yes. I mean, we basically, we subsidize, the taxpayer is forced to subsidize immigration, and then the taxpayer is forced to subs- su- subsidize the war on immigration, yeah. and then just everything about it is madness. So the number one thing is that you end the war on drugs, yep. you roll back as much of the warfare state, uh, the welfare state as you can, this way you're not subsidizing people to come in and you cut down on the black markets and the smuggling and all of that stuff. And all of the the interventions in uh, in Latin America, and all of the the DEA operations there, where we prop up the cartels that makes life miserable for people in those countries and leads to more floods of of immigration. I'd like to take more steps like that, but I am not on the Joe Jorgensen idea of like just. I think the idea that under current situations, just opening the borders tomorrow. Did you is like not Trump's practical. idea of a border? Um, I've always had the the kind of Ron Paul. Um, conspiratorial skepticism that I don't like the idea of building walls. I think they could be used to keep us in. And um, I like I, I, I don't like walls on kind of I think really bad governments tend to build walls and I don't like that. Uh, but I do think that it was reasonable that Donald Trump stood up for tens of millions of Americans who were like, look, we do not like that we have no say in who comes into our country. I think that's a reasonable position for those people. I'll, have. I'll I don't think it makes policy. them evil racists for feeling that way. You can have vibrant immigration and secure your borders. And this is the policy what we should be doing. We're talking about it for literally six years. You build two Ellis Islands on a southern border. One may be in Texas, maybe one in California. These two Ellis Islands are, are controlled by two separate companies. And the companies are private companies and they're basically recruiting companies. If you want to come to our country, you go to one of the Ellis Islands. What you do, you go there and they put you in quarantine or give you your check-ins, whatever they do, they check you out. If you are okay, they give you an orange card. And any state that agrees that that, that wants to be part of this this thing, they send you off to that state to go work. We know that you're working in that state. You check in every two years. While you're there, you are not allowed to take any public assistance at all, and you pay your taxes. That's all you do. You you just check in. If you you don't check in in two years, we come get you. We know where you are. We come get you. If you do check in, as long as everything's good, keep going. Another two years, you keep going. Now, how do you pay for that? We don't pay for that. They do. There's a model that's already working. It's called recruiting companies. Recruiters get paid as they place people. Right now, farms, um, people in the, in the hospitality industry, restaurants industries are spending billions of dollars in the black market to get labor. Well, don't spend in the black market. Just pay these guys. They'll get you workers as much as you want. Now, what if the people – you say, well, wait a minute. They're still bad people. Yes, they won't go to the Ellis Islands. They'll be along the border. That's what you use Border Patrol for, to get the bad guys. This way, the only people starving in the deserts aren't innocent families. They're bad guys who are doing bad things. I don't want anyone to starve in the desert. But if anyone's going to starve in the desert, let it be them. And our Border Patrol, without having to raise any extra money, is now focused only on that. Well, Larry, what if one of those those those, those uh, Bell Islands do poorly or hurt people? That's why there's two of them. People will go to the one they want as they're making money, and the market will make it better and better. But it's a bigger piece of that. There's give or take 10 to 12 million people in, in America right now who are undocumented. We don't know what they're doing, where they are. They can go to the Ellis Island, too. They can pack up and just go there and go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to become legal. Great. Go to the Ellis Island. Spend your 30 days. Get checked out. You're good. Go back to work. Work legally. When they go back, all of a sudden, the rest of the people in the community go, huh, so you didn't get deported? No. I did my paperwork. I paid my taxes. I don't take, I, I don't take any, any um, you know, public assistance. They're going to start going too, which makes law enforcement's job easier. There are bad people who come across the border in our country. We can't get them. They're all in enclaves right now, and everyone's scared to say where bad Pablo is. But if all of a sudden they're legal, they can call the cops. Where's bad Pablo? Right there. Just him. Go get him, cops. I'm not getting deported. He can't blackmail me anymore. 
So now law enforcement can do their job. You will watch the, the undocumented population shrink over the course of 10 years because most will just go get documented and the bad guys will get caught. This is an actual system that can work. And we can build more of them, as many as people want. Build a bunch of them if people want to. Doesn't matter. But here's the best part. If you do that, you now can make a private company authorized to now give things like green cards, right? Say over 10 years or whatever, take a test or whatever, whatever rules you want. They can start doing that process through that. Well, you have to speak English or whatever's the rules. You create those rules. Well, that doesn't affect anybody in line for the government. In fact, eventually the government will probably be worse. People start going to that instead of going to the government. We'll save money because more people will go to those Ellis Islands than go through the government system. This is an actual libertarian solution. The market is stepped in. We don't raise any extra money, no extra taxes, Everyone gets better service, and, and, and law enforcement is assisted. And if you couple that with what Dave was saying, ending the main reasons Bingo. for these massive surges to begin with, which is the DEA and the CIA and other government agencies through the war on drugs, sponsoring the U.S.-sponsored cartels to fight against the Russia and China-sponsored cartels so that they can take over this country and massacre anyone that didn't vote for their candidates, that's why they're fleeing. That's why you have—I mean, think of the Sophie's Choice situation that so many people mm -hmm. there are making, where they're sending their children off with smugglers they don't know, no Knowing the likelihood of them getting raped, them getting sex trafficked, them get ending up in, in one of these uh, cages. I'm sorry, Joe Biden's president now. These shelters, uh, they're not, they're not they, they stopped being cages January of 21. But they're doing that because they know the likelihood of them staying there is almost 100% that they'll be killed. That's the kind of problems that are being caused by the war on drugs. When you end that, a lot of these surges aren't happening. And now whatever system we use, whether it's through sponsorship, whether it's through more of an Ellis Island style system, whatever it is, you're not going to be managing all of the people that are coming here. The current system we have now, the war on drugs and the war on migration, have led to both a bunch of people who are just trying to flee violence in cages – or being separated from their families, which, by the way, is costing the taxpayer uh, anywhere between five and eight hundred dollars per day per person. Many of them spend months in there. I mean, you want to talk about a welfare system that costs far more than any oh. welfare system, right? You've got that going on. You've got this this major impediment to the flow of goods and services and people across the borders. Incredibly, to your point about uh, uh, walls being used the other way, increasingly traffic into Mexico is being stopped by Border Patrol agents for national security and drug control reasons. It's for control. It's another way to skim, right? But so – that's happening. And in the midst of all that, there are still millions of people here illegally, yeah. including MS-13 members and, and all the worst scary people and, and, and also a lot of people that aren't. They just they, – there is no legal process for them to come here, so they came here illegally. If you focus on if, – if you allow people to come and you have a more expedited system, then now law enforcement can focus on actual bad guys like Larry and, and Dave both said. And I can speak on this as someone who uh, – my wife, when we got married, I – was her sponsor to come here. The process we went through that cost thousands of dollars did absolutely nothing. Had my wife been a terrorist or whatever else, nothing they did Just would have one. stopped her from coming in. They asked her, are you a terrorist? No. Okay, are you a communist? <laughs> No. Are you they asked her if she was a Nazi, my wife is black and I'm Jewish. She told them that. Okay, just to, you know we're talking about Good for you, we're by the talking way. about do what, something. What was her answer? Yeah. Right. I'll get to don't, that. Don't okay? leave us in suspense. I'm trying here. to create a cliffhanger here, okay? Listen. I know how to build up a story. So, they asked her if she's a Nazi. She said, "I'm black." My husband is Jewish. Do you know what the response of the people who we have put in charge or our government has put in charge of protecting us said? Well, ma'am, uh, your husband could be a Nazi if he wanted to. He's an American citizen. <laughs> These are the people when we're saying we need to protect ourselves from the bad guy. This guy heard I'm black and my husband's Jewish. And somehow that made him think, well, I get but he could be a Nazi if he wanted to. These are not we're not sending our best. OK, <laughs> when it comes to this, we're not, not sending our best and brightest. This is another government program of and government course. programs don't do a good job at fixing this. We fix this by dealing with the government interventions that have made this worse. And then whatever is left, we can deal with that through market, through sponsorships, yeah. through a through a private Ellis Island system, whatever. But but do it in a way that now it's not this massive, you know, crisis surge. You don't have this humanitarian crisis on the border. You don't have children in cages. You don't have millions of people here illegally, including uh, gang members and everything else. And if there's any shot that they have of stopping bad guys from getting in here, it's going to be from them focusing on the people who are the most likely to be the bad guys. Because coming here for the right reasons is easy and able to be done. 
So yeah. you guys are on the same page on this topic. Mm-hmm. Borders. More, more or, or less. I, I mean, more, like we have we have slight differences <clears throat> probably between all three of us. But I do I, I do think that really like right, what we'd all probably agree on is that right at the heart of this is a war on drugs issue. I yep. mean, the major problem that you have at the border is the, the gang element of it, the criminal element of it, the drugs that are being smuggled in and the crime that's associated with that. And much like, you know, when, when we tried a prohibition that – all of a sudden, it was like there was this criminal gang mob element that rose up with it. Now, after repealing prohibition, the murder rate dramatically yeah. fell. The yep. crime yep. rate dramatically fell. Now, alcohol still is a problem. I mean, alcohol isn't great. And there are people who abuse it. There are people who ruin their lives over it. Yeah. There are people who are get very violent when they're on it. It's it's rela- Like, there's a bunch of problems with it. But you don't have the gang criminal problem still associated with alcohol because it's legalized. And likewise, that would happen with these other drugs as well. That doesn't mean there's no problems associated with it. You know, like everything in life is trade-offs. There's costs and benefits to everything. It's just that the costs are far worse of black markets and prohibition than they are of legalization. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.